No matter what diet you find yourself on, I think we've all been through it before. You're eating and then instead of feeling satiated and satisfied with your meal, now you start to have a craving or you're still hungry and you wonder how exactly is this possible? That's exactly what I want to explore in this video coming up next. So stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in to another video with Raw Vegan Food Diet. If you're new here, we talk about all things that will enhance your health and help you hopefully to reach your optimal form of health. And if this interests you, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And please share and like this post if you think it is helpful to you in your journey. And without further ado, I'd like to just get right into the topic. Are you hungry even though you feel like you've eaten enough calories? Or is it just a craving? Now, I'm going to approach this by first defining what a craving is and what hunger is, or is there any form of actually true hunger? Let's get into it. So let's check out the definitions for craving and hunger. So first, let's start with craving. A craving is defined as a powerful desire for something. Now let's go to hunger. Hunger is described as a strong desire for something as in a craving. So as you can see, even as the published definitions of what these words mean, it's exactly the same meaning. So now we're going to get into the real of cravings and hunger. So if you haven't guessed by now, hunger and cravings are mental. Yes, folks, mental conditions, mental states, or I wouldn't say a condition, that's a little harsh. I would say a form of consciousness that you can enter into when you feel a little out of control. Now, with that alone, that definition, that will tell us a few things on how you can actually fight back against this if you don't want it to rule you. And if you don't want cravings to rule you, for instance, or hunger, let's just call it the same thing, it will pass. So if you're getting physical symptoms, hunger pangs, as people like to say, stomach growling, things like that, which I have really, if I ever did, I don't really ever remember having the experience of hunger pangs or hunger growling. What I think is actually happening is either food that's already in the gut and it's being broken down and processed. Um, maybe it's, I wouldn't say it's clogging <laughs> the drain, so to speak, of your colon, but it is making some sounds. Maybe, um, maybe it is the bacteria in your colon that is actually eating the food and is actually making it sounds. I'm not really sure where the sounds come from, but it doesn't equate to what the idea that I've heard in the past of just your stomach is growling because you're hungry. Like people just hear things and recite things. Like, I don't know why, but um, yeah, when I have an empty stomach, whether I'm juice fasting or water fasting or just dry fasting or something like that, or I'm eating very light, there is absolutely no sound in my belly unless I put something more solid in my mouth to digest into my stomach and my colon. Once it starts digesting, again, you know, don't mean to sound repetitive, but that is what is actually making a sound. Like if I'm laying down or something like that, then I can like hear some gurgling or something like that happening or some churning or whatever the case is. So to me, it's really obvious. So I just want to let go of the idea for people that are just ready for this, actually, that there are actually hunger pangs. There are no such thing as hunger pangs as far as the sound. Now, as far as feeling state, there are a lot of different so-called symptoms. They may present themselves to suggest hunger. You might feel a little lightheaded. You might feel a little dizzy. You might feel weak. 
Now that is the main thing. And I also am challenged with that on my own. Myself is uh, at the moment is the weakness feeling. I believe that all of these things are mental. I really do believe that the mind sets up what it is and then the body follows. I'll say it again. I feel like the mind and the belief and the behavior talks the body into what it should present to you as reality. So starting with the mind and coming from that space, the only way you can change the feeling of weakness through hunger is to actually start to believe and either affirm with your mouth and tell yourself that my hunger or food is not connected to my body. Now, I know this is kind of a no man, no man's land for some of you, but and some of you have already guessed it. This is the beginning of the breatharian initiation. So it's taking a physical state that you may think is obvious that I'm doing something physically wrong, like a cause. If I have a physical symptom, like um, I'm hearing a sound and that means hunger, so then I have to physically put something in my mouth. It's retraining your brain to think of food and fuel differently. So now what I'm suggesting, instead of thinking, okay, you know, this is the physical cause and now this is the physical um, application or the cure, instead, listen to what's going on in the physical, sure, but don't take it as Bible. Don't take it as something like, now I need to do something. This is not for everybody, so if you want to click off now, it's totally fine. But to those people that are still interested, they feel called to this and they're still listening, this will be extremely help helpful to you. Now, it might actually help you eat less. And that's not the goal. The goal is not to eat less. The goal is to make sure that your mind is conditioned in a way where now you realize you are never lacking. And so that you can let in some of this abundance in this, you know, these good vibes on a physical and mental level. And that is that you are full. So when you tell yourself that you are full and you are nourished, then your body must follow. Now, how that's going to look physically, I don't know. For everybody, it looks different, I guess. But it might even come down to you see that your weight doesn't fluctuate. Even though you didn't have your main meal or your main whatever you, your usual meal that you used to tell yourself, oh, when I eat this, I keep a good body. Or when I take this protein, I maintain this type of body. Or when I do this creatine, I have these type of cuts. Now you're going to be relying mostly on your spiritual description of yourself and your spiritual deservedness towards yourself. So you're going to build yourself up in a way where you are now looking to who you are as sustenance rather than the physical things and the foods, so to speak, as that you would have done in the past to fill you up. You don't need to be full from outside sources anymore. So you might be thinking, okay, if you're doing this whole breatharian thing, why are you even talking about the raw vegan food diet? And that is because a lot of us, like myself, are in a transition. And we come from a space where we, want, we don't want to do any harm. Whether we do or we, we don't, we don't know. But that's our consciousness. That's how we feel as vegans in general. We don't want to do harm to others and we don't want to do harm to ourselves. So in my experience, I feel like the raw vegan food diet is the best way to do this especially when you're transitioning either completely away from physical sustenance and physical food and fuel or just partially meaning you have the awareness that you can do this but you like food you're a foodie and you like to enjoy food and you're not harming your body when you do so when you do decide it's just giving you more tools in the toolbox to use so that you feel free and you feel abundant and it's a good loving self-loving flow you know, with yourself and with those around you and the environment around you. So now you have the tools. We realize that hunger and craving is exactly the same. 
no matter what your doctors taught you. If you believe in your doctors, please continue to listen in the scientific um, studies and such like that. Obviously, you're free to listen. But this is my point of view. And I feel like this point of view frees you up, basically, to decide, do I want to eat or do I not want to eat? Because as we know, these two things are mental conditions. Now, if it's fine and you, find, you feel like you have a handle on it, and you like to still think that you're hungry or that a craving needs to, like an itch needs to be scratched and you can do so easily. You have the money, you have the means, it's right next door, it's right in your fridge, you can just grab it. And you like the way that feels, that's an option. Keep that, keep that same energy. But if you feel like now your cravings are starting to become addictive, it's starting to make your purse a little light, you know? Like you have to get the McDonald's meal with the this and this and that, you know, and it's just like, you know, $8 or whatever. And you just don't want to pay that every dinner or every lunch or every breakfast. Oh, I crave. And you don't want to be underneath your hunger or your craving. You want to be the master of your body. You want to be the master of your mind. This message is for you. And you don't have to crave anything or be hungry for anything ever again with what I'm suggesting right now. I declare it. Now, while you're still transitioning or you're still fancying yourself as a raw vegan dieter, you want to make sure that you are nourished. Yes, that is the thinking, that is the mindset of people that eat physical food. They want to make sure that their fuel is the best fuel, baby. You know, and that your car, which is your body, your vehicle, or your environment, is the best. It's all around you. And you want to just make sure it's just purring like a kid in your engine, you know? And it's nothing wrong with that. So how you would do that is you make sure you get all your micros, your macros, and all of those things like that. A little more complicated, but... You have to do it until you get used to the raw vegan diet from whatever diet you were from, you know, and a good way to do that is use Chronometer. I spoke about that in another video and that's a free app and you can just point, uh, punch in some of your meals and it will tell you uh, how much carbs, how much fats and things like that nutrition wise. And if you think you're low in any vitamins, I also have a video, and please click over to that after this video, that asks the question if raw vegans actually need vitamins and what type of vitamins do I take or do I take any at all? So check that out afterwards as well. But these are the things that you will have to do to upkeep yourself because of your belief system. Don't get it twisted. I'm not telling you you have to have these physical things to have optimal health. You do not. But if you believe that, then you better damn well get the things that you need <laughs> and make sure that you are nourished in this particular form. Because what's going to happen is you will most likely feel it. It will manifest physically for you. If you just try to bypass and just have less food and things like that, you will be in for a rude awakening. So what I'm speaking about is not starvation. The opposite of hunger and craving is not starvation for me. It is just realizing that if something is not a physical necessity, and that is a craving does not have to be satisfied, and hunger does not have to be satisfied through the body, then it is a mental suggestion. And what I do with all mental suggestions is fine if it aligns with my why, and if it does not, if it's got a hold of me, like some type of addictive vibe, then I can change it. So I guess the opposite of hunger and craving to me would be satiety, fullness. I feel full, I feel great. And if I wanna select other practices that feel actually more open and easier to do, like maybe yoga, meditation, or just being out in nature, then I'll do that. Or even imagining that I'm eating food and you know, making it easier for myself rather than just flailing around through my day with high highs and low lows because I am praising some false god of hunger and craving. 
If this video is helpful, please hit the like button. Also subscribe and also share this message with people that you think it can enhance and they're open to it, you know? And um, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you again with a very informative video. Thank you. Bye.